I mean, the world is rapidly a uh, changing place. Many uh, feel under pressure to update uh, our academic qualifications uh, in the uh, competition for jobs. Uh, give the question that comes up, should I study? And is it worth actually doing it? Well, joining me in the studio is Lance Klaas, and he's a former colleague of mine, a man who made a name for himself in radio production and news and talk. Uh, he's just finished his MBA at Henley and uh, is... Um, and doing a digital marketing course uh, with UCT. Lance, welcome to the show, and uh, great to have you here. Thanks, Stevie. Eden. Nice being here. All right. I mean, uh, you're over 40. Well, uh, yeah. I'm just, a, yeah just, just, a, just like you over 50. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at the age of 40, to decide that you're going to, um, you employed at the time, you decide you're going to do an MBA. Why did you do it? Mm. I went... Um, it, for, for me, when I went in, it was a bit like um, I fell into it. You know, I, I was meeting with uh, John Foster Pedley at uh, Henley Business School, and I was talking about we were still both at the other radio station, right. and I was trying to get um, the, the the workshops that we pop that were so popular at right. at Henley, and then John goes to me and says, "Lance, have you ever thought of doing an MBA?" And I thought, "Hell no, man." No, no, my undergraduate degree is in drama. I mean, I mean, I'm thinking. And then this thing, this opportunity comes along where, uh, where I could do an MBA at one of the top one percent of business schools in the world. Yeah, and I grabbed it, and uh, I was I was a recipient of a bursary, and so I didn't have to pay. Thank God, I didn't have to pay for two hundred thousand rands worth of education. Right, right. And that's how I fell into the MBA, and. Um, the first thing that they do at Henley Business School is this. They, um, they don't give you a class. They bring your family in and they say, life's going to happen to you. And more often than not, life does happen. You know, where even though the Henley, Henley prides itself on the, being the family-friendly MBA, what, what in, in effect happened is that in my syndicate group alone, we had, I think, four divorces. Wow. <laughs> Four people changed jobs, including me. Uh, I opened up a business, and there were two babies. Wow. And so life happened to us, and that's the kind of thing that you have to accept. In well, what kind of strain did it have on your family? I mean, you were a, a relatively new father, mm. uh, married as well, uh, working a full-time job, uh, long hours, uh, if I remember. Mm. And what kind of strain? The, the strain, the, 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 the good thing is that my wife and I work in similar industries, so we understand the dynamics of the industry. So the first year and ooh, uh, eight months, there was no baby. Then the baby pitched up. And what happens with when the baby pitched up, it's that uh, it, 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 it splits your focus a bit. But the, luckily, when babies are small, they, 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 they sleep them for most of the time. Right. If, it, if a child is a two-year-old or 18-month-old, they want your attention. They know it's daddy, and they're going to come into the room. They don't care if daddy's on an assignment or not. Yeah. And they come into daddy, and they go, daddy, 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 and you have to be there. You know, so I'm glad that fatherhood happened in the second half of the MBA. In the first half, it would have been a, it would have been a, 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 a problem. Speaking to your last class of a man who did an MBA uh, uh, over the age of 40 with a full-time job and family as well. Tell us a little bit about the MBA. The MBA, um, the, the, the one that I did, and it's not... It's not it's not uh, it's it's not the same as many of the MBAs. Uh, uh, many of them are over eighteen months. It's much more intense. And then there's one that's over. This one was over two and a half years. That means it could spread it out. But it doesn't take away the intensity. Uh, it just gets spread out a bit. But you know, an MBA is an MBA. You know. How much work did you have to put on a week? Oh, uh, an hour a night, two hours a night. Um, if your if your assignments are spread out, you could actually live your life, and then for the last two three weeks, then you put your 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 your, uh, your you start grinding into your assignments. The, the 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 biggest stress is probably the exam because it's not it's not really a test of knowledge, is in that it's more test of memory, and you have to you don't go there to try and get A's, you go there to to, to get through it. Yeah, you know it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be, you know you're not. 
if you if you're going in there thinking that you want to get uh, cum laude, you're going in with the wrong attitude. You just have to go there to get it yeah. done. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to be get get it done. Tell us a little bit about some of your classmates. What were they doing? How old were they? What kind there, of there, there was a vast range of our classmates. You know, the, if the if you if you every demographic that's possible. You know, uh, South Africans are taking, in a, especially specifically people in corporate life, are taking um, academic education very seriously. Before you could get away with a matric or an undergraduate degree to climb the corporate ladder, those days are gone now. Yeah. You know, if you if you're serious about about uh, getting into the to the right positions or opening up businesses and stuff, this is the kind of thing that you have to do. Yeah. You have to really invest in yourself. You know, if you don't invest in yourself, nobody's going to invest in yeah. you. Um, with my classmates, we were a strange bunch. Um, there's one guy called Ian Davis, and Ian and I, before our, we submitted our, our dissertations, we literally took time off from our lives. From I took a time off from our business. He took time off from his career, and we decided that we're going to finish this thing this year. So, and th- and that's what what you have to do. You have to make a decision if you're going to finish it, or you or you're going to or what's going to finish you. Meaning that you have to go and decide to do it because only I think three of us in our syndicate group completed on time and in time. Really? Yes. The other guys are going to be submitting next year. So I, 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 I so w- there are a couple of tips that you have to do to get getting through this. First of all, you have to find uh, a buddy who can push you and challenge you. Uh, but above all, you have to make a decision to finish that thing. He's going to say, "I'm going to dedicate time." Um, the former. Was in my classes, uh, Musa Zondi. He was the former spokesman for N- Kosenati in Kleko. And he did the same thing as I did. You know, we literally moved into Henley for a month and we decided we're going to finish this thing. And uh, it's, been, it's been one of the more rewarding experiences when, when you finish it and you say, I'm handing it in, I'm done, I'm gone, I'm out of here. Did you think you'd passed? Uh, yeah. 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 You get a feeling, don't you? Yeah. Um, also, y- you get. There are th- there are some things that that where some people, the accountants strangely struggle on the financial aspects of the of the MBA, and the um, the marketing people struggle on the on the marketing side, and in fact many of them had to resubmit or they only got like just fifty percent. <laughs> so the, these are the things the strange uh, the strange uh, nuances of an MBA. Um, when you come into the dissertation. You pretty much know what you're going to do. Uh, how are you going to do it? Uh, the, the, the harder thing is that you have to do research. So my research was qualitative research over, over, uh, uh, instead of uh, instead of uh, quantitative research, because I just don't I don't think I have the math skills to do it. You know, so that's what why. What was your dissertation? What was your subject, Lance? It was on um, how to turn analog radio listeners into digital users. Okay. So it's it's a, so it's almost like the holy grail that we've all been chasing. Um, and the re- and, and my uh, secondary research has found out, you know, we're all a bit bli- like a blind men in a in a room. You know, we're trying to f- we're trying to to find some way out of it. You know, and it's trying to get some direction of it as an industry, it's not just uh, a not just radio stations, but print, uh, television, all of us are in the same boat. And one of the things that I've found is that uh, what we do well is content. What we don't know is our audience. For example, for you, who's, who do you know that's listening to you right now? I don't. You don't. So we've got research that goes back three or four months, and we get sort of an idea of a demographic, correct? Right. What we do what does Facebook know about its users? Yeah, I hear you. Everything. Yeah. So we have to develop a data set uh, and the data skills and the, and, the, and, the, uh, and the technology. No, the technology is there. We just have to put it to good use in order to find out who our audience is and be in a relationship with those audience members. It's important. You know, we have so much to give. People warm so much to us as an industry. But we don't know them, and the, and the best. In, let, me, let me let me and you will agree with me. The best interactions that we ever had as a radio station is when we did those workshops. Yes, yes. Because people are real; they touch, they feel. Yeah. Even over here at Mix, let me let me ask you: When you have events, don't people warm to it? Then you can yes. really see them. Yes. So, why not make that relationship longer, more in depth, instead of having 
uh, a breadth of relationship that's ex- extremely shallow. You have a depth of relationship in saying, we don't have, we have, we we, we might not have uh, one million listeners, but we got ten thousand, and we know every single one yeah. of them. So that's what we, that's the the next stage as as traditional media that we have to do. Are you using your NBA things that you uh, things that you uh, I know you're consulting at the moment mm. things that you learned in the NBA? Do you find yourself uh, even uh, surreptitiously using them? I I think and speak in NBA talk now. You yeah. know me before the MBA. Yeah. Now I can talk about, you know, what are the ratios that we're using, you know, yeah. or what's the modeling, you know. So what I, it's, it's, it's but, but, you know, I, I, it's, it's almost like a bit of a trap, but that's the way I think now. In that, uh, I've got a, I've got a, a contract that I have to sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it through a flowchart to find out what are the gaps in the contract. Yeah. So that's the kind of thing so that you actually that's, are using. I it. use it, you know. Yeah. I really do use it, eh? I, I, so one of the th- but but the, 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 it's not a panacea for everything. It doesn't solve every problem. Problem, but you know you have to make use of the tools that you have to, you have yeah. to use. And it's not gonna and if uh, it's not gonna change you if you're not a nice person, you know. Yeah. But but it still work. Is it worth it? After all of this, is it worth it for me? Yes, it is. And then yeah. I think um, the thing of for us learning uh, has to be constant now. Before we all thought that we're going to get an undergraduate degree, we're going to go off into somewhere and we're going to become millionaires. That only happened to you, Stevie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those days are now yeah. over. So we have to see right. ourselves as in a constant st- stream of learning. Learning is not just for young people. You know, it's, it means that I have to read constantly. Now I'm, now I go and buy the Harvard Business Review and I read. Yeah. What's the what's what's taking place in the world? That's yeah. that's the, the kind of stretching of, yeah. of what's fantastic. Takes place. Anyway, there you go, man. Really um, changed his life around by doing the Henley uh, MBA, and uh, I've watched uh, Lance and grow uh, since he's done that uh, MBA. It's quite uh, ast- astonishing uh, to see. Uh, Lance, we wish you good luck uh, with your future endeavours. Mm-hmm. And uh, congratulations of uh, doing the MBA under very difficult circumstances with a new family uh, and uh, with a job that took a lot of your time. Last class and everybody, I hope you found uh, that interesting. Maybe it will give you motivation to go and uh, increase.